Hi everyone, Pete Calamain here. I hope you're having an awesome day. Now you might be wondering why is a pin 1 indicated on an inductor? An inductor that would seem a simple component. Now this video will show you why that dot is there and why you might need to take it into account in your next switch mode power supply design. By the way, if you want more hints and tips like these, feel free to join my free community. It's in the description below. So this is a design that we have been using in a previous video. If you want to look into that, you can uh, look it up in the description below. But basically you see that there is a pin 1 indicated over here. And also in the schematic symbol, uh, this is a word inductor, there is a pin 1 indicated. Now, why is there a pin 1 on an inductor? You will see them on a lot of inductors. Um, most of these that you see over here are shielded inductors, a couple of unshielded as well. But on most of them, we do see a pin 1 indication. Now, first of all, let's maybe step back to the switch mode power supply basics. So what you see over here is a buck converter. Basically, there's an input supply. You want to step it down to some kind of a lower output voltage. There's a load over there. There's a capacitor. Most importantly, inside there's two switches, a high side fed, low side fed and your inductor. So it's an inductive buck converter. Now, how will this be working? The switches will go on and off, uh, both in a separate phase you will have some kind of a, let's say, square wave, uh, we could say at this point. Um, so there's some kind of switching voltages, switching currents here towards the inductor. Now, if you think in terms of EMI, electromagnetic interference, in the switch, switch mode power supply, basically, if you have a PCB board, if you have a system architecture, typically the switch mode power supply will be the highest uh, source of EMI. And then within that switch mode power system, we need to look what are the main sources. So the EMI is determined, of course, by switching speeds. If you're going to switch uh, quicker, there's be, there will be higher EMI. But also a very important factor is the slow rate. Higher voltages will also have a big effect there. Input and output filtering, shielding layout, we'll go into that uh, in a minute, grounding. But the main source for emissions is basically your switching node. What you'll have is you have an inductor. That is a wire, to, to put it very simple, that's a wire that is uh, made in a coil. So basically it's an antenna. And you're going to excite that antenna very quickly and with high voltages. So this node over here is the one to watch out for in your switch mode power supply system. Here is the main source of EMI. Now, if we go back to that PCB layout over here, what you see is we have intentionally kept this track short. And then you also see that the pin one indication, you see it over here as well, is on this terminal. Why did I do that? Well, first of all, you have an antenna. Basically, if you want to reduce EMI, you want to reduce the antenna. So what we're going to do is we reduce this track length over here to, from the converter. So these are integrated switches. So in this uh, IC, these two FETs, they are integrated over here. And then you connect directly to your inductor. This is a very short trace. So you want to keep it short. Also interesting is if you can use a shielded inductor. So something that looks like this where your magnetic field is more contained, it will help as well. But an important one is your inductor geometry. You want to have the pin one at the switching node. Why is that? Well, for that, we need to look at the buildup of an inductor. So it's basically, it's a wire that has been made in a coil. There's an input and an output, or there's two terminals, let's say. There's no real input or output. It can be reversed, of course. But in terms of physical uh, setup, you see that one pin, is lower here towards the bottom then the coil or the wire is coiled all the way up and then you have a second pin so pin one over here is at the bottom um, you can also have other types of coils where pin one is somewhere inside of the coil and then it's turned outside but basically what you see in the z plane is that one terminal is much shorter than another and much lower to the bottom you can imagine if you start your pin one over here um, you go all the way up to the top, it will act more, much more as an antenna. So by construction it, itself, if you're using pin 1 at your switching node, you're better shielded. So that's important stuff to take into account. Now, if you look at actual measurements, these are measurements that I took from a paper from analog devices, you'll see how big the difference is. So the red line that you see over here is using the correct uh, between brackets orientation of the inductor. So pin one is very close to the switching part. The blue part, there the inductor is turned 180 degrees, meaning that you are connecting the switching node over here 
to the worst terminal, let's say. What we see in terms of results is that the radiated EMI on orientation one red line is much lower because most of all you have that shorter path, you have less of an antenna effect. And what we do see is 15 up to 20 dBs of improvement. So that's a big difference. This could be the make or break in your certifications for EMI and EMC. Now, if we step back again to this design, that is why you want to have your pin one at the switching node. And that's also why in layout, you want to keep, the, keep this track as short as possible and then have the pin one over here. We could even argue that maybe we can even rotate that inductor to get it even closer over here and then put the rest around it. So this is interesting stuff, um, very important stuff. If you were not aware of it, now we will always be pin one. There is a reason for that. So I hope this video was interesting for you. Of course, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll be happy to help. If you like the video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And if you like the channel, of course, feel free to subscribe. If you want more hints, tips and tricks like these, feel free to join my community. It's in the description below and it's free. Hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye.